You know, there is so much stuff going on, it's incredible. We can't even keep up with what's happening globally. But there is an awakening that is happening. It's a global awakening. And there also is a global departing. There is a falling away that's also happening. Many are falling away to the deception. You know, we always talk about deception. Deception. You know, people are deceived and so forth. But there's something that the Holy Spirit grabbed hold of me this morning. And he said, you know, people don't realize that deception is a power. And we want to talk about the power of deception because it is a power. It is a force. It's not just someone being, oh, I, I'm deceived. No, there's a power of influence behind this. And this power is demonic and it is evil. That's why it's called deception. It brings bondage. It brings danger. It brings death. It brings defilement. Deception. It's not just somebody can just shrug it off. Yeah, I was deceived. Well, there is a power behind deception. And that deception is out to kill, steal, and destroy because it is a power and it is a presence. And we need to begin to be more aware of just being deceived. No, there's a power behind deception. And it's called the power of deception. Psalm 43. Psalm 43. Welcome to training for reigning. We are not religious or Bible study. This is training session. Amen. Amen. We serve the Lord of hosts, who is the commander in chief of the military. This is an operation that was ordained by God Almighty to battle, to fight, and to take dominion. And you've been called. See, many are called, but there isn't many faithful. There's not enough faithful. There isn't enough consistent. There's not enough individuals that are sold out. People, many people accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior just to become Savior, but he's never Lord yet. They'd never reach that level where they're not living for themselves. They're living for him. In Psalm 43, verse 1, let's speak it. Vindicate me, O God, and plead my cause against an ungodly nation. Deliver me from the deceitful and unjust man. For you are the God of my strength. Why do you cast me off? Why do I go mourning because of the what? Oppression of the enemy. O oh, send out your light and your truth. Let them lead me, let them bring me to your holy hill and to your tabernacle. Then I will go to the altar of God, to my God, my exceeding joy. And on the harp I will praise you, O oh my God, my God. Why you cast down, O oh my soul, and why you disquieted within me, hope in God. For I shall yet praise him, the help of my countenance and my God. This is so powerful. He says, vindicate me. In other words, repay my accusers and captors. Allow me to escape their hold on me. Only with your light so I can see and with your truth that will bring me free can I enter your tabernacle, a place of assembly of worship that brings your presence in songs of deliverance. See, oppression is an evil presence that takes hold of the emotions and the thoughts of an individual. It's called the power of deception. Evil presence is power. See, we don't fight flesh and blood. We fight a presence. So many people think that every thought is their own. If they would begin to monitor their thoughts, they'd realize where they're coming from. They grab hold of emotions. People are still living in how they feel. They make their decisions in how they feel. They live a life of emotion. How many of y'all know your emotions can mislead you? See, that's the difference of standing on the truth. But if you don't know the truth, you don't read the Bible, how could you know the truth? And if you don't own a fellowship with assembly where they're being trained and taught, how are you going to know the truth? 
This is not just a time of gathering to say hello and meet someone. This is a time of training. Why? Because there is an eternal war going on right now over mankind. It is a matter of life and death. And we are entering the last days. There's so many days left, so many years left before it's done. And we must be a part of this last day harvest. Amen? In Acts chapter 10. Chapter 10. It's amazing how many people are on antidepressants when they just need to go get rid of that spirit. It's called oppression. <laughs> Acts chapter 10. See, the world does not know how to deal with a demon. They don't know how to medicate it. And they actually medicate the person so that the person gets goofy and doesn't submit to the voice of the demon. But they still do anyways. That's called demon management, not freedom. Hello. Acts 10, is everybody there? One of the greatest powers of deception is medication. Pharmacia, witchcraft. People don't even realize it. Just because the doctor says it's okay doesn't mean God says it's okay. Amen? I don't care how many degrees people have. You stand on the truth. Now, don't get me wrong. I take Advil. You know, God provides certain things to take. Amen? Amen? But many times I've hurt myself, broke something or whatever, and I've decreed no pain in Jesus' name. And there was no pain in Jesus' name. See, if you start off that way, instead of going to the phone, go to the throne first, you might find your life turned around. Amen? Amen. But the carnal man wants to jump in first and say, yo, medicate! <laughs> Management. Again, there are people that are on high blood pressure and things to that degree, diabetics and so forth, but there are ways off of everything. It's just the diet that people are on or the associations or the inherited curses of these spirits. Addiction is inherited. Diabetes is inherited. All of these things are inherited. They come down the family line until somebody repents and breaks that power off and gets free. Acts 10, is everybody there? Good, I'm almost there. <laughs> Glory. <laughs> Verse 34. Oppression. Oppressed by the enemy. How many of you know sickness can oppress you? How about pain? How about fear? Anybody ever been rejected? Anybody ever been offended? Don't raise your hands. Well, you, see, that's an emotional state of being where the enemy gets fed by, the demons get fed by emotion. So they want to get you in an oppressed state so that you're miserable. Then you look for something else for fulfillment. Take a pill. Have a drink. Take some dope. And get more stupid. That's why they call it dope. Amen? Run to the doctor and get an antidepressant. Drink cough syrup. People do all kinds of strange things. They're looking for a false fulfillment to remove the spirit, but you can't. Only the name of Jesus and the power of the anointing of Christ Jesus, backed by the truth of God Almighty, can remove that spirit. Amen? Amen. Or people are oppressed. They go to psychiatrists and all kinds of places. Man, I remember this one doctor I went to because I was praying, praying, praying. I said, Lord, I don't know what the heck's going on. And this guy, this person came across my path and said, look, go see this person. I went to go see this doctor. The first thing he'd do is lay his hands on me and pray for my healing. That's the kind of doctor I like going to. And he tested all kinds of stuff. And I said, Lord, okay, now what do you want me to do? He said, submit. I said, all right. Come to find out my thyroid was off. So he put me on natural stuff. Totally better. Been fine ever since. Praise God.
But the psyche stuff, man, that's dangerous stuff, man. The pain medications is dangerous stuff. Those are dilute you, cause you goofiness. You can't connect when you're on those things. No matter how hard you try, you cannot connect. You'll want to connect, but you can't because it's called the power of deception behind it and influencing it. It's dangerous. Dangerous. And that's all they really do is they put a person under demon management and these people actually get worse. They don't get better. They get worse. In verse 34, is everybody there? Let's speak it. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, In truth I perceive that God shows no partiality, but in every nation whoever fears him and works righteousness is accepted by him. The word which God sent to the children of Israel, preaching peace through Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. That word you know, which was proclaimed without Judea. All began from Galilee, after the baptism which John preached. How God did what? Anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with what? Power. Power. Who went about doing good and healing all who were what? Oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. So the anointing is what brings healing to oppression. And the anointing is the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty. Amen? Let's go a little further. And we are witnesses. Now, wait a minute. Oppression comes by who? The devil. A demonic force. And we are witnesses of all things which he did, both in the land of the Jews in Jerusalem, whom they killed by hanging on the cross. Him God raised up on the third day and showed him openly, not to all the people, but to witnesses chosen before by God, even to us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is who was ordained by God to be judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets witness that through his name, whoever follows him, or believes in him, will receive remission of sins. See, the anointing, the anointed, the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty was sent to free those who have been taken captive under the power of deception and evil presence through the anointing, the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty. Without God's presence, we're nothing. Amen? We're nothing. That's why it's so important for assembly. That's why it's so important to become a worshiper. That's why it's so important. And the more you do that, the more you shed yourself. The more you get into God's presence, the more you shed yourself. The more spirits begin to leave you. The more you see clearer. The more you hear clearer. But if you go back and build on those things that God delivered you from, Things will be worse. Amen? In John chapter 1, the power of deception. Again, it is a power. It's a power of evil presence. So when a person lies, they're bound by the power of deception, aren't they? That means they've taken control. The purpose of deception is to control. So when a person is deceived, they're controlled by an evil presence. I was deceived until I saw the light. And it wasn't somebody who came in and turned on a light. Laying next to the pool, taken, I was captivated, I was abducted <laughs> by God Almighty. I saw the light. And I couldn't see anything else. And I realized that he was everything I've ever wanted and was looking for. See, the light, the truth. I realized I was a son and that I was on this planet that I don't even belong. It's temporary. 
And when I was brought to the other side, I realized this is home and this is what I want. But it wasn't time, apparently. But I said, if this is death, this is awesome. <laughs> Kill me today. <laughs> And my life changed. And I ran to his presence ever since, and I'm still running to his presence because that's where the light and truth is at. That's where my hope is at. That's where my home is at. That's where my life is at. It's in his presence. That's where your life is at. It's in his presence. When you fade away from his presence, you begin to lose true life. That's the great power of deception. To fade away from the presence of God means that you are under control of something else, keeping you away from the true light, trying to creep in more and more darkness, trying to blind you more, keep you more in a plate of deception, and hope to eventually you open the door to the enemy to allow you to kill him, kill yourself. In John, verse 1, chapter 1, let's do it. In the beginning was the Word and Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and all things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the what? Light, light of men. So light and life are associated. And the light shines in darkness, and darkness did not comprehend it. Darkness can't comprehend light. Something must happen first. Darkness cannot approach light. It runs from it. Until there is a broken heart and a person says, Lord, forgive me, then the blood of Christ washes him and he now has access to the light. But without the washing of the blood, no one has access to the light. That's why the blood always goes before the spirit. Does everybody understand that? Now the spirit may draw you and... and unction you and try and convict you to turn and turn and turn until you finally get to a place where, Lord, forgive me for being such a moron. And you get washed by the blood of Christ. Now you have access to the light, and the light has access to you. And now is the beginning of a relationship. But the moment you go back, you break covenant, you sin, which is association with agreement, a wall comes between us. It's called a wall of darkness. And you can't reconnect again. Now you can say, Lord, forgive me, forgive me, forgive me, which is good. But when you repent, it means turn away. So you can't say, Lord, forgive me Friday night for going out and partying. I'll go to church Sunday and do it, keep repeating it. Amen? It's okay. God will forgive me Sunday. When I go to church, I'll party all weekend long. I'll do my dope, pain pills all week long, and I'll be just fine. No, you won't. You'll never be connected until you drop it. Does everybody understand? That's what turning away means. In verse 6, so darkness cannot comprehend the light until the blood of Christ has cleansed them. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for a witness to bear the witness of the light that all through him might believe, which the word believe means to follow. He was not of the light, but was sent by, by to bear witness of the light. You know, that's a great deception in the area where people just say, well, I, I believe Jesus, but choose not to follow. That's where the power of de deception is. People think that they're once saved, always saved. That's a power of deception. <clears throat> you serve the devil while you're trying to enter the kingdom of God, you're not going to make it. Amen? That's a power of deception. People think, well, I believe, that, not realize that the word believe means to follow. That's why Jesus said, follow. Amen? When he went up to all the disciples and apostles, what did he do? Hey, follow me. And they did. They dropped everything they were doing and followed. That means following his ways. You're entering a whole nother realm in the kingdom of God. It's a whole nother lifestyle. It's a whole nother association with people. It's a whole nother integrity. 
Everything is different. We're not of the world anymore. But if you want to be a part of the world, you will lose the eternal world because you cannot serve two masters. Amen? Verse 9. That was the true light, which gives light to every man coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God to those who believe in his name or who would follow his name, who were born not of the blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but were born of God. And the word became flesh, physical, and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of what? Grace, which is God's plan of escape, and truth to bring freedom. See, the battle between light and darkness, because light allows you to see, darkness keeps you blind. It is the light of life, darkness is of death. Both have power, but all power originated from the Creator. Even the power of darkness originated from the Creator. It was given to His creation, only some turned from the life source <laughs> and life force to darkness. Many reached the light source, however, Many don't. Many refuse to. Remember, light allows you to see. The word said, what was he crying out? The psalmist, Lord, please release your light and your truth. Why? So I can get into your tabernacle. In Revelation chapter 12. Revelation 12. Glory. The power of deception. In verse 7. And war broke out in heaven. Where? heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought, but they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. This means in God's presence. There's multiple levels of heaven. Amen? There's the eternal realm where the glory of God were in the throne of glory was. So Lucifer was God's right-hand man at one time. He was the praise and worship leader of the universe. So he took a third of the angels with him, and he rebelled. And so God removed him from that level of presence. Amen? But he's still in the unseen realm. He's in the second, what we call the second heaven. In verse 9, So the great dragon was cast out, the serpent of old called the devil, and Satan, who does what? Deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now the salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ has come for the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. So the power of Christ against the power of darkness. Without power, how can you do anything? And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. By the word of their testimony, they did not love their lives to death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. But woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea. For the devil has come down to you having great wrath because he knows that he has a what? A short time. This is where we are at right now. Satan's greatest weapon is deception. Amen? And his power is fear. But power is a weapon. I mean, deception is a weapon. Every weapon has power. Amen? Every weapon has power. Again, his greatest weapon is the power of deception. That's how he keeps people in bondage. Our greatest weapon is the power of the presence and truth 
of God Almighty called the anointing. That's why you are baptized in the Holy Spirit to overcome. In his Christ, we're received at the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and we must maintain connection to maintain power to overcome the powers of deception. Deception is the source of evil controlled by using the frequency of mental thought influenced by emotional desire. <coughs> Brings confusion. He utilizes false doctrines and doctrines of demons. Confusion of the mind. Again, the purpose is so that this presence would control and manipulate individuals. And that they would control and manipulate other individuals. It brings the individual into a false belief system, holding prisoners in darkness, not able to reach the light of, in life for escape. Again, we must stop looking at deception as just an influential lie but it is the strongest power of evil. It is the strongest power of evil, deception. Yes, there's many offshoots, perversion, and all kinds of other things, but that's still behind deception. Amen? In 1 Corinthians 6, when I was a drug addict, I'm no longer a drug addict, when I was a drug addict, I was an under great power of deception. But people don't realize that there's life and death in the power of the tongue. So they go to these meetings and say, hey, I'm a drug addict, and they stay one. Oh, they may not be using, but the character is that spirit is still there. So they're always under a demon management all the time. I can't tell you how many people I run into to tell me, yeah, man, I, 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 if I don't stay busy, I'll use. Well, what the heck kind of life is that? It's called demon management. So I got to occupy my mind on other things so I don't use. Bummer. That means there's a presence still there and you're still under deception. I need my medication. We get a lot of people that want, don't want to come into discipleship because they don't want to give up that stuff. They'd rather stay bound. 1 Corinthians 6, 12. Is everybody there? 6, 12. 1 Corinthians 6, 12. Okay, let's get there. Hallelujah. Let's speak it together. All things are lawful for me, but all things are not what? Helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Well, that means the power of what? Deception. Foods for the stomach, the stomach for foods, but God will destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for sexual immorality, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. And God both raised up the Lord and will also raise us up by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I then take the member of a Christ and make them members of a harlot? Certainly not. Or do you not know that he who is joined to a harlot is one body with her. For the two, he says, shall become one flesh. But he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Flee sexual immorality. Every sin that a man does is outside the body, but he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is the what? Temple, Temple of the anointing. Who is in you? whom you have from the Lord God, and you are not your own. Everyone say, I'm not my own. For you were what? You were what? You were bought for a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. You were bought, you and I were purchased by the blood of Christ. That is the true sacrifice that Jesus made for you and me. That means he bought you back from hell. He bought you back, pulled you out of darkness so that you may see light, follow light, maintain light, and be a witness of his power and glory. So that we're no longer under the power of deception. We are temples of the anointing, the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty. In Romans chapter 1, 
Romans chapter 1. In verse 18, Romans 1, 18. You know, I, you know, we see all the time, even in the news and all kinds of other stuff, and how there's deception, you know, how the media lies and so forth and all kinds of other things. Not realizing that they're under a power. The purpose of deception is to bring people under control so that they believe the lie, and that becomes a stronghold. A memory lie. And that lie begins to open doors to other demonic activity. People hate people and don't even know why they do. People fear things they don't even know why they fear. Did you ever ask someone, why do you fear water? Why do you fear heights? Most people can't answer why. They just, they just don't fear. I just fear it. Why? That's when you kick him in the pool. But don't throw him off a building, okay? <laughs> but many people fear things not even knowing why they do. Most of the time because it's an inherited spirit. Yeah, well, my mother feared the same things. Well, Hello. You got the same demon. There's many of the same demons. Romans 1.18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who what? Suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Because what may be known of God is manifested in them, for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made, even as eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. So no human is with excuse. They got no excuse. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their what? Thoughts. And their foolish hearts were what? Darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man, and birds and four-footed animals and creeping things. Therefore God gave them up to uncleanness in the lust of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves, who exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. In other words, because of, because of the refusal to submit to his righteousness or refusal to acknowledge their sins of rebellion, against the life source of all creation, God, they decided to worship creation instead of the creator. He stepped back and he allowed the power of deception of all evil forces to infiltrate their soul, their mind, their will, their emotions, their imaginations, their conscience and subconscious. And falling into the most hideous and perversive and deepest areas of darkness and delusion. Look what else happens. In verse 24, or verse, uh, yeah, 24. Oh, I'm 26, I'm sorry. It says, for this reason God gave them up to what? Vile passions. For even their own. Women exchange the natural use for what is against nature. Likewise, also the men, leaving the na natural use of the woman, burn then their loss for one another, men with men, committing what is shameful and receiving in themselves a penalty of their error which was due. See, people are, don't realize that lesbian, transgenders, and all of this other stuff, homosexuals, these are spirits. They are spirits. Now, the temple, they weren't born that way. They were not born that way. God did not create Adam and Steve. He created Adam and Eve. Amen? All of a sudden, after a certain period of time, they began to change. 
because that spirit had been residing, it's been inherited, or something happened. That's why the enemy loves to go and attack children, even though they are innocent children. That molestation, that rape, that abuse opened the door to a demon in their life, even though they didn't deserve it. Amen? They didn't deserve it. But remember, we're, this earth is ruled by Satan's kingdom. That's why you're seeing more and more of the power of deception being revealed. More and more. It's unfolding. It's raveling back. In verse 28, even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind to do the things which are not fitting. What did he do? He stepped back and let the power of deception in. Being filled with all unrighteous sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness, they are whispers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, who knowing the righteous judgment of God that those who practice such things are deserving of death, not only do the same, but also approve of those who practice them. So that person might not have practiced it, but he may approve of it. So that person might not practice homosexuality or lesbian or may not practice abortion, but they approve of it. They'll be judged the same way. So people better be careful who they vote for, who they put in office, because they'll, there's blood on their hands then. Amen? Is everybody okay? Amen. Hallelujah. Ephesians 4. Is everybody there? In verse 11. And he himself gave some to be what? Apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. For what? The equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of the anointing, that we should no longer be what? Children, ignorant, tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men, and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting, so that you and I are no longer tossed by doctrines, by emotions, by people's sayings or opinions. Amen? Look at it. If it's not backed by this, don't accept it. Everybody all right? So we must be equipped, trained, and we're challenged. We must get to a place where we are disciplined. We are consistent in putting into the practice the wages of warfare to overcome the power of deception. Many, many people don't even know how to fight spiritually. They don't even know how to fight physically. I can't stand these uh, flicks that show all of these uh, possessed houses, you know, paranormal stuff. And they go in there and they get another witch to come in there and they do all kinds of charms. I'm like, I'm yelling, cast the devil out! <laughs> Nobody uses the name of Jesus, you know. Of course, television, backed by the power of deception, is not going to promote Jesus. Man, you see all of these horror flicks and all kinds of stuff that are, man, I was brought up as a horror flick. <laughs> I was one of the characters in there. That's why my mom used to call me, you little devil. But anyways, when I was brought up, my dad and I, man, we watched horror flicks all night. He'd come home and wake me up at midnight. Come on, they're on. All right. I wonder why I was a maniac, <laughs> opening myself up to all of these things. Hallelujah. People don't realize nothing but works of deception. Amen? Amen. So we've got to be prepared. We've got to learn how to fight. We've got to know how to use the name of Jesus, but you better know, you better be backed by the anointing. Amen. Amen. There's too many people that are in prison right now. Even people who so call themselves Christians are in prison. Galatians 5. Verse 
In verse 16, Galatians 5, 16, I say then what? Walk in the Spirit. That's in the anointing. And you will not fulfill the lust of the, or the, listen, where there's flesh, there's power of deception. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary to one another. So don't, you don't do the things that you wish or you desire or that are influenced by the flesh. But if you're led by the spirit, you're not under the law of sin and death. Now the works of the flesh, what I want to call, the, the works of the flesh are the works of those who are under the power of deception. Are evident, which are what? Adultery. Fornication. Uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, which is medication, drugs. Hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath. Ooh, what else? Selfish ambitions. Snap. <laughs> Let's go a little further. Envy, or wait a minute, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revival revelries and anything like it of which I tell you before and just as I also told you in time past that those who practice such things well what but I'm a Christian man you practice those things you are not getting home <laughs> amen you're not getting home that is the power of deception why? Because he's deceived these people thinking that they're okay because they've accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. But they're not following him. Only those who follow him get home. Amen? They will not inherit the kingdom of God. Well, man, you know, my, my parents are, their, their life is a, you know, they, they own bars, they own nightclubs, they own this, they own that. That's how their income is. Well, they better sell it and get out of it. You know, my wife and I were doing a deliverance and healing serve, uh, seminar in a, and I think it was in Ohio. And one of the women, uh, another person came from another church and she owned three bars. She couldn't get it. Well, we pray for the people. That's good. So get them drunk, pray for them. Here, let me do a shot and pray for you. Woe to them who serve strong liquor. Woe, W-O-E, without eternity. She just couldn't get it. She never showed off her deliverance. She had an event at the bar. So I followed up after I asked somebody if they didn't know. She, see, she wouldn't give up the money. See, money is also used as a power of deception. Money is used as a power of deception. People live for money instead of God. They serve money more than they do God. They spend more time in figuring out how to spend their money than they do how to serve the Lord. Power of deception. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Is everybody all right? Works of deception, these are powers that influence the flesh to promote corruption. You know, there's all kinds of things that promote corruption and destruction. How about Hollywood? Music, medications, media, money, fame, pride, lust, all of these things. Everything to avoid you from the light and truth and the anointing of Christ Jesus so that you can be free. You know, so many times people expect to just be step into God's presence and be free all at once. I'm not saying that can't happen, but most of the time it doesn't. There is a shedding. There's a process. Why? Because he wants to teach you why you're going through the process of being free. So there's training. In 2 Timothy chapter 3. This is a power that is the most powerful, wicked. Second Timothy 3. In verse 1, we know the scripture. 
here it tells you these are all people are all brought under the power of deception. But know this, in the last days, perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of what? Themselves. Lovers of what? Money, the second thing. Bolsters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders without self-control. Brutal, brutal despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. They have a form of godliness, but they not deny the anointing, the power. Why? Because they haven't come to true repentance. They have no authority. They're not staying connected. And from such people do what? Turn away. Be careful. They're all under the power of deception. He said, turn away. Don't walk. In other words, be careful that you're not in fellowship with these individuals. Why? Because bad company corrupts what? Good habits. Second, uh, go to the next chapter, 4. Second Timothy 4. I charge you, therefore, before God, in verse 1, in the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearance in his kingdom. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, which means their own emotions and how they feel. Well, I just don't feel like that. Can you imagine Jesus? Man, I don't feel like hanging on a cross today. Kill them all, Lord. <laughs> Thank God I wasn't God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Start a new race. <laughs> He's, in other words, don't be led by how you feel. You know, people get out of position and get out of order and get brought under the control by offense. They get into bitterness and unforgiveness. All of these things that are an area of the power of deception. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own emotional desires. Because they have itching ears, they will heap for themselves teachers. And they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned to, aside to what? Fables. Wow. So we see that happening right now. You know, the word tells us that there will be many false prophets in the last days. Believe me, turn CNN on, NSNBC, ABC, BBC, The View. That's all false prophets. And people don't get it. There's many of them. I can't name them all. Even Fox has got a few false prophets on there, too. Believe me. You know, Fox got bought out by Disney, so you know what they're trying to import. Hallelujah. Again, they're taken under the power of deception. Many are called, but few are faithful. And Romans 12. A couple more scriptures. But I really believe that the Spirit's saying, we got to get this in. Because deception can no longer be petted or compromised. It must be attacked and removed. Romans 12, verse 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a what? Living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your responsibility or reasonable service. And do not be what? Conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, which means refreshing. Amen? Bringing to remembrance. How do you bring something to remembrance? You've got to refresh it all the time. That you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Again, renew is to what? Refresh. In other words, to maintain a level of re remembrance. Staying not only filled with the Spirit of God, but staying filled with the Word of God. To overcome the demonic frequency of lies and power of deception. Listen, we are a life of memory. Amen? 
And one of the things we want to get away from is the old memory. That's why he says, set your thoughts upon the kingdom above where there's a new integrity. Amen? Where Christ is, the Christ-like character. We maintain connection to the anointing. And we live from the future, not from the past. When there's disorder, then we know that it's the power of deception. Because the power of deception brings disorder. Amen? When there's disorder, in other words, when there's priorities out of order, the world lives in a state of me, me, and me. It's a self-trinity, me, myself, and I. But as a kingdom child, we no longer live for ourselves. That's why the first thing he said, here's the formula, deny yourself. Pick up the sword and fight, and then you can follow me home. You know, here's reality. One day we'll stand before him, but we can stand before him every single day. That's why we should set him before us. What am I doing that's pleasing you, Lord? And what am I doing that's displeasing you? What am I doing that's approving what you approve of? And what am I doing that's disapproving what you approve of? Amen? If we'll put ourselves before him and self-examine ourselves and not be men-pleasers, but be God-pleasers. Remember, we're entering a whole new realm of life what's waiting for me and you is endless this is all temporary <laughs> this is temporary and everything that we do here right now is affecting us eternally we've got to come to the point where we got to realize that deception is not a puppy It is a power of evil, the greatest power of evil, where everything shoots off of. Amen? Oh, 1 John chapter 2. You know, you and I are to love God and hate evil. He tells us you're to hate evil. Don't pet it. Don't compromise. In 1 John chapter 2 and verse, uh, sheesh, I think it's 3. <laughs> Is everybody there? <laughs> By this we know that we know him. If we what? <laughs> Keep his commandments. Now his commandments are not what we're talking about, the Ten Commandments. Anything God speaks is a command. So the word of God is a command. Those are his commandments. Amen? He who says, I know him and does not keep his word is a what? Is a liar. And the truth is really not in them. But whoever keeps his word, truly the love of God is perfected in him, and by this we know that we are in him. See, this is where people turn from the area of, I'm a good person. I'm okay. I'm a good person. Tell that to God when you get in front of him. I'm a good person. It ain't going to work. See, the entrance says you must practice justice and righteousness. People are still eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So the greatest power of deception, thinking the person is good. Somebody get this. I'm a good person. I've never done this. I don't do that. I don't do this. I do this. See, I, I, I. Jesus say, I don't know you from me you practice lawlessness why because you don't practice my word people that don't practice the word of God are considered lawlessness so but okay whoever keeps my word truly the love of God is perfected in him perfect love casts out all what all fear by this we know that we are in him if we what practice his word if we live his word he who says he abides in him ought himself also to what? Walk just as he will. In other words, that doesn't mean you're going to put on long robes and, you know, whatever, and carry a cross on the street. It means you're going to put on Christ and his character. 
Amen. You're going to approve what he approves of. You're going to disapprove what he disapproves of. You're going to turn away from the things that you know are not right. You're going to allow, not allow anything to get between you and the relationship. You're not going to allow any power to overcome you of deception. You realize that your life has been bought. Everything that you have is his. I just happened to borrow his shirt today. I have to return the sneakers when I'm done, though. You and I don't own nothing. We're to be stewards. Stewards. See, the power of deception begins to drift in the area to where I can do whatever I want. I'll just buy this, buy this, buy this, buy this, buy that. Never acknowledging the Lord first. You know how many people buy dumb cars? Buy dumb houses? Get married to dumb people? Why? Seek ye the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things will be added. Acknowledge me, and I'll guide your what? Paths. That is the great deception, isn't it? That's the power of deception. People not acknowledging him first. Just thinking it's okay. I worked for it. Who gave you the talent? Who opened the door for that job? Who sent you to college? God is behind everything. Or the devil's behind it. How many of y'all know the devil can bless you too? But you wouldn't know that. Like that girl that thinks owning three bars is a blessing from God. No. No. <laughs> oh, happy days. Is everybody okay? Amen. Praise God. Darkness blinds. It's caused by the power of deception. It blinds. Some people only have certain sight. They can only see so much. They can't see fully. We want the full stature of Christ the full power of the anointing. We want to be able to see things all the way through. We want to be able to think things all the way through. We want to be led by his spirit. And that can't happen unless you stay filled with his spirit and filled with his word. And stop touching things that are unclean. See, something may be unclean to you or it's not unclean to someone else. Some people have a hard time with money. It, money may be unclean to someone because they don't have control over it. It has control over them. To certain foods. Some people are, eat the same thing over and over and over. And again, there's nothing wrong with eating the same thing over and over and over if you're not willing to change. How many of y'all know God's got something else for us sometimes? Amen? See, so people are brought under a bondage, don't they? Anywhere there's a bondage, there's a power of deception. Anywhere there's a fear, there's a power of deception. And believe me, doctors love to place labels on people. That's what I got. Well, what's God say? Hebrews 12. We'll close here. Nobody can live on Oreo cookies. <laughs> or windmill cookies. <laughs> if you have two a day, that's okay, though. <laughs> Hebrews 12, verse 12. <laughs> Is everybody okay? Does everybody understand what's happening? I mean, this is essential for right now because there's so much going on out there. We're being bombarded with the power of deception all the time. Verse 12, let's speak it. Therefore, brethren, or therefore strengthen the hands which hang down and the feeble knees and make straight paths for your feet so that what is lame may not be dislocated or disconnected, but rather be what? Healed. Pursue peace with all people and holiness without which no one will see the Lord. Looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, lest any root of what? Bitterness springing up cause what? Trouble. And by this many what? 
become what? Defiled. defiled. Why? Because defilement <laughs> is power of deception. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person like Esau, who for one morsel of food sold his birthright. For you know that afterward when he wanted to inherit the blessing, he wanted to inherit the blessing. See, he was seeking the blessing. It says, he was rejected. Uh, wait a minute. For you know that after when he wanted to inherit the blessing, he was rejected. For he found no place of true repentance. Amen? Though he sought it diligently with tears. In other words, he cried because he missed the blessing, but he wasn't truly sorry for what he did. For you have not come to the mountain that made me touched and that burned with fire and blackness and darkness and tempest and the sound of a trumpet and the voice of words so that those who heard it begged that the word should not be spoken to them anymore. For they could not endure what was commanded. And if so much it, as a beast touches the mountain, it shall be stoned or shot with an arrow. And so terrifying was the sight that Moses said, I am exceedingly afraid and trembling. But you have come to the mountain of Zion, to the city of the living God, to the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly in the church of the firstborn, who are registered in heaven to God the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect, to Jesus the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than Abel. See that you do not refuse him who speaks, for if they did not escape who refused him who spoke on earth, how much shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven, whose voice then shook the earth, but now he has promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not only the earth, but also heavens. And this yet once more indicates the removal of the things that are being shaken as the things that are made, that the things which cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we have received a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. So we know that we are in the shaking. Amen. The purpose of the shaking is to expose deception in our lives and expose your enemies. Amen. Of deception. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. Now, Lord, I just pray that each and every one of us here today receive your word with thanksgiving and willing to practice it in our lives. Not just listeners, but hearers. That we may not only receive, believe, but execute your word. And be ready and prepared that we may overcome all deception and become God-pleasers for your glory, for your honor, and your praise. In Jesus' name. Amen.